In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to figure out when and where this video clip was taken. Shout out to QuizTime for sharing this post. You can follow them on Twitter for more geolocation and OSINT related challenges. I'm uploading a series of these videos, so if you enjoyed this episode, you can subscribe to the channel to see more in the future. Now let's get started. At first glance, we can see this is likely a construction or a demolition site. Let's play the video once all the way through for a general overview. As you can tell, there really isn't much to work with from this video, but if we take one step at a time, it is possible to solve this with a bit of trial and error. For our first step, let's see if we can find the manufacturer of this blue colored excavator. I've saved a screen capture of just the excavator so that I can use Google to do a reverse image search. If I click on this camera icon here, that'll give us the option to upload the photo of the excavator from my computer. This Cobelco logo in Google Images looks like it's a match. Although the logo from the video is too blurry to read, we can just barely make out the letters K and O at the beginning and the final O at the end. Alright, so we've identified that the manufacturer is Cobelco, but that doesn't really help us narrow down the year or the location. Cobelco is a well-known company with a global presence. If this were a small manufacturer with only one or two locations in the world, then we might have been able to work with that, but even so, the excavator could have been exported to another country. If we were to identify the exact make, model, and year of the Cobelco in the video, that still wouldn't definitively tell us the year the video was recorded. The excavator could have been used for a number of years before the video was even taken. Let's go through the clip a second time to see if we can pick out any other clues. We can see a fairly large smokestack here, which means this could have been an industrial area. Let's keep a note of the chimney as a possible landmark. In this frame, we can see a waste removal container with a logo of what appears to be a lowercase b with a fading effect. I tried a number of reverse image searches using the same process as what we just did with the excavator, but I couldn't find a match since the photo was too blurry. Instead, let's get a little creative and see if we can try to replicate the logo ourselves. For this example, I'm using Keynote, which is Apple's equivalent of PowerPoint. This logo isn't too complex, so really any software will do. If we were dealing with a more complicated logo, then we would want to ask a designer for help. Let's go ahead and type a lowercase b and a few lowercase l's for the fading effect. Enlarge the font size, change the font color to red, make it bold, and lastly, let's remove some of the spacing between the characters. Excellent. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. Now let's take our new logo and try a reverse image search. We'll start with Google and see if we get any hits. No luck with Google. Let's switch over to Bing and try another reverse image search using their image upload tool. There it is. Looks like we've got a match. Perfect. Now let's click up here where it says pages with this image to see a list of websites that have this logo somewhere on their site. From these first few links, it looks like this is a German company. Let's check out this link here to see their profile on Crunchbase. Alright, so according to Crunchbase, Jacob Becker is a German company that specializes in waste disposal and logistics. It was founded in 1898, and they have upwards of 5,000 employees. Assuming all of this information is accurate, they've been in business now for over a century, and it's a pretty large company, so we're likely to find that they have a lot of locations throughout Germany. Before we go to their company website, let's see what we can find out about the person who posted the video to Twitter. The idea here is to find possible areas in which this person may have lived, 
and then compare those areas to the list of locations where this company offers its services. If we look at the poster's Twitter bio, we can see he's likely located in Hamburg. There's also a URL to the site Xing, sometimes referred to as Crossing in English, which is essentially the German equivalent of LinkedIn. Let's look through his profile and see if we can find where he was previously located. Alright, so this profile location is also listed as Hamburg. Let's scroll down to see if we can find any additional areas. I don't see the locations listed under each of the job entries, however it does show that he attended university in Leipzig. Let's try to see if he has a LinkedIn profile as an extra source of verification. We'll search for his name using quotation marks with the keywords Hamburg and LinkedIn. By using the quotation marks, we're telling Google to only return results that include his name in the order that we've written it within the quotes. This will greatly help to filter out unwanted hits in our search results. Alright, it looks like we've identified the correct account. As we scroll through his profile, we can see a history of three locations. Hamburg, Berlin, and Leipzig. Next, we'll want to verify that the Jacob Becker company has a presence in any of these areas. Let's go back to their Crunchbase profile and click on their website URL. Now let's navigate to the location section. Alright, so we have some locations in Berlin, which is one of the three areas on his LinkedIn profile. So far, nothing for Hamburg. Here's a location for Leipzig. Excellent. And lastly, a few international locations that we can take into consideration if we don't have any luck in Germany. At this point, we've narrowed it down to two locations in common, Berlin and Leipzig. Now remember, in his tweet, he mentions he recorded the video a long time ago, which we can clearly see from the quality of the camera. Let's start as far back as we can from his university years in Leipzig, which according to LinkedIn was from approximately 1999 to 2006. Going back to Twitter now, let's see what this individual has tweeted about with regards to Leipzig, starting with a hashtag search from his handle. At this point, we're trying to find any clues that could help us narrow down the neighborhoods he may have lived in that were under heavy construction. Notice in this first result, it appears to be a short biography of the individual and perhaps a colleague from 2005. At the very bottom of the bio, we can see a URL with his last name and the word info, which could mean this is a personal website for his resume or CV and may include a residential address. Let's enter in the URL and navigate to the site. Okay, so it looks like it's redirecting to his crossing account, which means his personal website has likely been removed. Let's try the Wayback Machine to see if we can find an archived copy of his website. The Wayback Machine is a free tool offered by the Internet Archive that essentially crawls websites over time and makes copies available for the general public to view. This is a fantastic resource for discovering web content that may have been removed or altered over a period of time. Let's go ahead and type in the web address. All right, it looks like there's a copy of the site from as far back as July 2004. Excellent. Let's check out the oldest version from 2004 first. Notice there's a link here that says Impressum. And Impressum provides information of a website's owner and sometimes includes a physical mailing address. This is similar to a legal notice that you would encounter at the bottom of a website, and I believe it's required under German law to have the Impressum available on most German websites. Let's go ahead and click on the link. Looks like we found our first address in Leipzig. Awesome. Let's return to the main calendar now and check out a capture from the following year in 2005. We'll click on the Impressum link again. It looks like we found another address in Leipzig. Perfect. Now, I've already reviewed most of the archived copies for this website, and these were the only two addresses I could see from Leipzig. Let's switch over to Google Earth so we can map out these addresses. It's important to note that I'm using Google Earth Pro, which is a free desktop version you can download from Google. One of the most important features in Google Earth Pro from an OSINT perspective is the ability to look at historical satellite imagery. We'll attempt to find any indication of a large demolition or construction site within close proximity to the two addresses that we've identified. 
The demolition site in the video is rather large and would be clearly visible from a satellite. I've deselected all of the layer features using the panel on the left so that we have an unobstructed view of just the imagery. If we click on the clock icon at the top here, an option to change the timeline will appear, and this is how we can see any historical satellite imagery that may have been captured of this area. It looks like this middle option is from 1985, but that's too old. The type of camera that was used to record the video didn't exist in the 80s, so we can discard this capture. The next option is from October of 2000. If we zoom into this plot of land here at the bottom left, we can see this area appears to be under construction. When we jump to the next available capture in June of 2006, we can see the adjacent plot is now completely demolished. As we zoom in, we can see a chimney towards the top of the map here. Jumping back to the year 2000, it's difficult to see, but we can just barely make out the chimney here. This is looking really promising. If we zoom in again on the imagery from 2006, we can see a blue excavator, which could be the same Cobelco excavator that we identified from the reverse image search earlier. If we zoom in on this area with the patch of grass, it looks like there might be some waste removal containers, but it's not clear enough to see whether it's the same Jacob Becker container as the one in the video. Now let's compare the available imagery from the year 2000 to the demolition site in the video. This roof here is a match. This gap here and the building in front of the chimney are a match. This longer building here is a match. This smaller building here is a match. This red roof here is a match. And finally, this patch of grass here is a match. So there we have it. We've confirmed this clip was taken at some point shortly before June 2006 in Leipzig, Germany. That wraps up our fifth episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.